Hello, welcome to uh, today's tutorial of the Leading Edge Simulation Saab 340 with an X-Plane 11. Today we're going to be looking at joining a visual circuit. So currently uh, 19 miles uh, almost due south of uh, Gold Coast Airport. We're going to come in and uh, join the circuit for runway 14. Now, um, it's the easiest way of uh, getting in. Uh, obviously we don't really want to fly. Uh, 15 odd miles to the other side of the airport and back again down instrument approaches when we don't have to. So uh, today we're just going to uh, join a uh, midfield crosswind and uh, then complete the circuit from there. So just cruising at 6,000 feet at the moment. Uh, so in calculating the descent profiles, uh, generally we use a 3 degree profile which is what uh, most instrument approaches use. In that uh, the aircraft will descend 300 feet for every nautical mile. Now we're coming down uh, for a high performance aircraft, the uh, circuit altitude is 1,500 feet AGL. So I'm going to set 1,500 in here. So it gives us 4.5 miles to lose, which can be about 13.5 miles to descend on that. I'm going to use 15 just so we can get down to circuit height before joining the circuit. I'm going to set 1,500 feet per minute. I'm going to bring the torque back to around about 40%, 30, 40%, and that should uh, be keeping us around about 230 odd knots through the uh, descent when we're down low here. If you're descending from uh, flight levels and uh, maybe 60% initially uh, until the uh, density of the air picks up. With um, vertical speed, the rule of thumb for a 3 degree uh, profile, drop the last digit off. Uh, so we got 25 here, half of that uh, is what we need in uh, thousands of feet per minute. So I'm bring it back. Go 13 because it's probably closer to 26 at the moment, and uh, that should get us in. So, for a um, visual approach, uh, air traffic control generally uh, require you to track inbound on your uh, assigned uh, inbound track to you within five miles of the aerodrome, and then you can maneuver as required to join the circuit. So, we're coming in on the uh, are we on the 178 uh, radial at the moment. So what I'm going to do is come into heading mode now. So I want to set up the GPS in a way that we can uh, use it to provide situational awareness. So I've got uh, VOR2 on uh, course 2 here. It's already set up to the runway heading. Obviously not every airport has a uh, VOR, so we're going to use the GPS as well. So with the GPS, so it's currently got Gold Coast VOR as the highlighted waypoint. It could be the aerodrome reference point, whatever uh, you know, your aerodrome that you're going into actually has available to us. So we'll use the uh, VOR in this case. We're going to use this OBS function here. That's going to freeze it onto the uh, current waypoint. And it's also going to allow me to manually adjust the uh, inbound uh, or, or the CDI track indication that it gives us. So I'm going to set that to our runway heading of 139, uh, which is set there. And we've got five miles. 5 miles, 1500 feet, that's looking alright. So we're going to come back now to flight idle. So I want to get the speed back a little bit. So we want to try and uh, hit the circuit at circuit height and uh, also uh, doing 170 knots. So I'm just going to come around slightly to square us up. So just adding a little bit of extra space there just for the uh, speed that we have. Alright, so that's set on a uh, 90 degree intercept for our uh, crosswind join. I'm going to reset the timer because we're going to be needing this. So the whole circuit's based on the speed distance time triangle. Durain, so Durain, it, uh, uh, yeah, that's checked. So I uh, want to be trying to do around about 160, 170 knots through uh, the uh, circuit into uh, coming into base where we slow down. So we can use the uh, CDI indication or uh, look out the window. So just seeing we're just capturing 1,600, so I'm just going to add about 30% power in. Beam about there. So we'll start the timer. We want to fly crosswind for 20 seconds. In this case, we've only got eight knots. So I'm just going to come out a couple of degrees just to counteract for the wind. 8 knots isn't really uh, too much to worry about, might just put a couple of degrees on there. So now that we're uh, in the circuit, 
seconds, 20 seconds will turn on to downwind. So with the altitude pre-select alerter, if I leave it at 1500 feet and try to go into vertical speed, nothing will actually happen because we're maintaining the altitude that it's already assigned. So we must reset that to uh, a different number. I'm going to go 4000 feet for the missed approach and that'll allow us to descend through the circuit without it capturing any altitudes. Now, while we're uh, looking at it as well, the uh, setup items that we uh, did prior to uh, top descent as well, we've already got the landing lights turned on and the CTOT is set to 100% for the go around as well, just in case we do require it. Uh, right, so now we're looking for the uh, landing threshold and we're going to restart the timer again once we're a beam that. Now ideally we want to be about two miles offset, I think the VOR in, uh, is somewhere back there. That's timing there. So now that we're timing we're going to take the gear down below 200 knots. And we're also going to go into vertical speed, about 600 feet per minute descent. Just going to take a little bit of power off. So with the gear typically the taxi light comes on, the auto course and comes on. Now we're going to turn off the prop sync and go to max RPM on the propellers and then take flat 15, just put some power back in. So there's 25 seconds now, I'm going to turn on to a base. Ideally we're sort of coming back to about 145 knots as we uh, come in base. And speed's below 165, so it's going to take flat 20. Now we're essentially configured for landing, so we could do landing checklist at this point if we were uh, so inclined. So the gear's down through green, condition levers max, flat 20 set. And all we've got left is the autopilot. Now there's no timing for this one, we kind of need to uh, eyeball it. So we've got... Just come back to 500 feet per minute. So we do have the CDI on this one to give us a little bit, otherwise we need to try and eyeball it. So center line sort of comes through about here on the spit, so I reckon about now. I'm going to turn in for about a 10-15 degree intercept, just in case we haven't got it quite right and then we can tweak it from there. So we're looking out, we need to try and visually work out uh, how we're doing. So I think the center line's over here, just short of that highway. As we're doing this, we don't really want to go below about 140 knots. Might get a tools warning off this hill with visual clearing. Yeah, so that's looking alright. It's going to turn it in. Get rid of the autopilot now because it's easier to do the uh, minor manipulations by hand. Flight director can come off. It's no longer providing useful information. Delay, delay, delay. There it goes. We ignore that. We're visually clearing. So we're looking pretty good on the uh, puppies there. Now coming back to uh, Ward's flight idle, we need to get the speed back to uh, VRF plus 20 window. Adding nose up trim as I do that. And we'll bring the power back up to about 20%. Now we're looking, it's touch low. So ideally we should be around about 1 degrees nose down as we come down through final here. If I let go, the nose isn't really pitching so the aircraft's in trim. Just need to make gentle corrections from here. So coming through the uh, runway threshold now, slowly bringing the power off, slowly bringing the nose up, only a couple of degrees nose up, no more than five into the uh, touchdown. Fatal lights illuminate into reverse onto the steering tiller. Clean up the aircraft so the uh, external lights can uh, come off. Flaps retracted, we'll turn off the ice protection, auto course, and high pressure bleed valves if they were open. And we'll uh, reset the seat uh, and the trims. Alright, so that was a uh, quick demonstration of joining the circuit. So in this case, we joined a crosswind. 
Uh, if we're coming in from the other side and we want to join a downwind, uh, the majority of the circuit is the same. In terms of uh, spacing for that one, you want to try and hit circuit height around about uh, five miles out from the aerodrome. Depending on uh, how aggressive the turn is, if it's only a, uh, a 45 degree turn or more onto a downwind, you can probably about four miles to run, uh, turn onto a downwind, otherwise if it's uh, more like 90 or quite aggressive from the wrong side, 110, 120 even, then uh, probably five miles you'll need to uh, get onto that. Uh, if you have a reasonable uh, distance to uh, the threshold, two miles is the ideal number. It should be somewhere around two to three, depending on exactly where. Uh, so the VOR's on the other side of the runway, so it was never going to be quite accurate, but around that two to three mark. Uh, downwind, uh, once you're being the threshold, downwind for 25 seconds and then uh, from there visually uh, putting yourself onto a uh, reasonable position for uh, final. Hope you've enjoyed this video, if you've learned something give us a like, uh, if you have any suggestions for future videos leave a comment and uh, we'll see you in the next adventure.